every time we can celebrate the Eucharist, we break the body, we pour out the blood. And in so doing, we dramatize our brokenness and death. I don't know how many times I've celebrated the Eucharist in my life. I'm pretty old, so it's been a lot of times. But it was just a few weeks ago where it hit me for the first time. How the celebration of the Eucharist has two sides, two parts of the drama. Because first comes the breaking and Jesus entering into our suffering entering into our oppression, entering into our brokenness. His body is broken and his blood is shed. And you understand that in the ancient world, death is understood not as the flat line of brain waves. It was understood as the separation of blood and body. And so the body and blood are separated. But then it struck me, just a few weeks ago, for the first time, it struck me that when Jesus invited us to take his body and his blood, what had been separated by sin, by the apartheid of human ego and pride working against God, Jesus was telling us, you take this in and it becomes reunited in your body. You become ages of the reconciliation of all things, you become participants in, in wholeness being restored to a broken and divided and shattered creation. Don't think about this too much, because if you do, your brain will sort of blow apart, but your body consists of over 60 trillion human cells. And I've been told that there are even more cells that are non-human inside of you. Don't think about that too much. <laughs> but you, we couldn't survive without the non-human cells along with the human cells. 60 trillion. And every single one of those 60 trillion human cells contains about 400 billion molecules consisting of trillions of atoms. That means that the total cellular activity going on in your body at this moment totals over one sectillion actions. Now you know why you're so tired. <laughs> That's one with 24 zeros after it happening every second, every second. It just happened again. An awful lot has to keep going right for you to take another breath. It just has to be done. There are more processes going on in your body at this instant than there are stars in the entire universe. You are a miracle of wholeness. A lot of things going on, part of the whole of you. And you are part of the larger holes of your family, of your faith community, of your community called the Episcopal Church, of the Anglican community, of the Christian faith, part of larger communities of nations and ecosystems, and of this planet and of this solar system and of this galaxy. And we are people who, through Jesus Christ, learn to see things whole and help restore us to the story of creation, the story of life. And so Jesus says, he says to the woman with the issue of blood, he says to the woman whose little girl was so tortured, he says to the blind man, he says to the man with the withered hand, your faith has made you whole. Your faith brings you to wholeness. No wonder in the Colossian hymn, 
the early Christians sang, In Christ all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. In Christ all things hold together, for God was pleased to have all God's fullness. Well, in Christ and through Christ, God was pleased to reconcile all things to God's own self. For the apostles, the gospel was not a message of a new religion entering the marketplace competing for market shares or souls. But for the apostles, the gospel was a new hope into which all people are invited. A message of reconciliation and a plea for everyone to be reconciled. God, the ultimate and eternal goals, which includes this wholeness of the kingdom of God, which includes us. Seek first the kingdom of God, Jesus says. Seek first the greater wholeness, and everything else you need will be added. So Jesus walked among the people, touching and healing and feeding and bringing people into connectivity with God and with each other and with all of the kingdom of God, spreading a contagious wholeness which doesn't absorb particularity into homogeneity, but a wholeness which mirrors the Trinity where Father, Son, and Spirit are not collapsed into one another but are a beautiful, glorious hope, in whom there is no apartheid, no apartness, but glorious harmony, wonderful unity, majestic mystery. What do you think about that? Very good. What do you think about that? It's interesting that you brought up words and in a, in a sense talking about a new way of looking at the idea of sin. I spend a lot of time with words uh, teaching theology but you also brought up advertising and I teach at an advertising school about words. And there's an interesting uh, thing about words, particularly about the English language. Um, there's a writer named Mark Abley who says that change is the meat and drink of the English language. It's the most fluid language there is. More people in Asia are speaking English than in the Western world. And every day, thousands of new words, but also thousands of old words are being reconfigured, revisited, readdressed, re-looked at. And uh, so I was really struck by this idea that you bring up an old word like sin and offer another tangent a way in. And the second thing about the whole idea of uh, connectivity was, this is a convention, in case you haven't realized it, Jimmy. And uh, words have been spoken day in and day out, words of liturgy, words of conflict, words of peace, words of business, words, 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 words. And at the beginning, there were some words about um, individuality and the challenge, perhaps, that our obsession with individualism, uh, the havoc that it's wrought on our culture, but also maybe on church. And it seems to me that the, the task here is to think about connection, connectivity in a new way, to see it perhaps as the real path to wholeness. You know, we thought, well, you know, you get your own little thing going and you'll be free and fine. But maybe it's in connection, in the breath we share with each other, with the universe, the recycled breath of humanity that makes us all uh, connected and moving towards wholeness in profound ways. And Jimmy's 